Hey guys, John from FlyAtMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to be talking about Class D airspace. Where you'll find it, how to get into it, and what all the different parameters are, the required equipment on board, and what's required of you to enter Class D airspace. So let's go ahead and take a look at our map here and we're going to use the Punta Gorda Class D airport as an example today. So we can see our Class D ring, that dashed blue line is Class D airspace. And then the next thing we want to look at here is we can see the 2-5 in this little box. That means the Class D airspace starts at the surface and goes up to 2,500 feet MSL. Typical dimensions of Class D airspace are going to be 2,500 feet AGL and about four nautical miles wide for the radius. So we can see here we have an eight nautical mile ring and we have the ceiling of that class D airspace going up to 2,500 feet. The next thing we're going to notice is this little dash magenta line that juts out at the northeast corner and that is class E airspace. And we're going to talk about that separately so we're just going to leave that aside for now but we just want to really focus that the class D airspace is just the blue dashed line around the airport. We then see this bigger ring around the airport that has uh, a compass rose on it with all these different headings and that's actually for a VOR so that has nothing to do with our airspace that's just a VOR navigational aid so let's leave that aside and now let's just focus on what the airport information is that's provided to us so we can see here that we have what looks like about three runways there and we have a little dot here right in the middle of the runways that denotes where our VOR is located on the field we can go ahead and come over here a little bit to the right and read that this is for the Punta Gorda Airport. PGD is the identifier, KPGD. The control tower frequency is 121.0. It's a part-time control tower. We have a little star there. They close at some point. If you wanted to know when, you could go ahead and just check the AFD and it would let you know the operating hours. We have a C there that indicates that the CTAF frequency when the control tower is not in operation is going to be the same as the control tower frequency for 121.0. So we would just announce on our common traffic advisory frequency on 121.0 at night when they close. The ASOS is 135.675, so that's our weather information. So they don't have an ATIS apparently, not an ATIS, it's an ASOS, it should be an automated voice. And we can see here that the elevation above sea level of the airport is 26 feet. We have a little starred L there, which means pilot controlled lighting or part-time lighting. So we just assume it's pilot controlled lighting when we come in there at night and the tower's closed, the lights might be turned off. We have 72, that means the longest runway available there is 7,200 feet, 7,200. And just to the right of that, we have 122.975, that is our Unicom frequency. So that is how we're going to contact the FBO. If we need a rental car or if we need some fuel, we want to call them when we're 20 miles out, we would call Unicom on 122.975. Then we see this note here that says see NOTAM's directory, AFD, for class D slash E surface hours. So we could check the AFD to see what time the tower closes and the airspace switches from class D back to class E airspace. Now a few other things to note here, when we look at the center of the airport, we can see these little squares coming off that blue circle, those three little square type things, and that denotes that there are services or fuel available at the airport. So that way we're not landing at an airport when we're low on fuel and finding out that there is none. Also, there's this little star at the very top of that blue circle, and that denotes that there's a lighted a uh, rotating beacon that's in operation from sunset to sunrise or from dusk to dawn at the airport. We should see a white and a green flash denoting a lighted land airport from dusk to dawn rotating at the airport or anytime the weather's below VFR they'll often turn on that same rotating beacon. Now let's talk about our requirements to go into class D airspace. Well, we don't need anything special in our airplane. We don't need VORs, we don't need a transponder or anything like that. We do need to make two-way radio communication before entering the Class D airspace. So how we're going to do that is listen up about 10 miles, 12 miles out, get the ATIS, 
and then call up when we're about 10 miles away from the airport and let the tower know that we're coming inbound. We're not going to call approach control. We're going to call the tower directly. We're about 10 miles out. We're ready to go ahead and call up the tower. We'll let them know that Punagorda Tower, Cherokee 9 or 9 or 0 7 Whiskey, is 10 miles to the northwest, landing with Zulu. So who we're calling, who we are, where we are, what we want to do. Punagorda Tower, Cherokee 9 or 9 or 0 7 Whiskey, 10 northwest, landing with Zulu. Cherokee Niner Niner zero seven Whiskey Punagorda Tower report three miles northwest for a left base. Make that a left downwind runway three three. Report three northwest for a left downwind three three Niner Niner zero seven Whiskey. All right, so we'll report three miles from the field, three miles to the northwest. So we'll just fly this heading, report three miles out, and we'll gauge three miles as best as we can. The best metric you'll have is using those runways. So if you have a runway that's 5,000 feet long, just kind of count, you know, one runway, two runway, three, four, and, and there you are. There you're three miles out from the field. And so we'll report to him when we're three miles out. That'll jog his memory to remind him to clear us to land on runway 33. And he said he wanted us on a left down for 33. So so our airplane is going to go ahead and follow in on this track to enter a left downwind for runway 33. We have two-way radio communication established, so we're automatically cleared into the class delta airspace. So let's talk about what two-way radio communication really means. If you're told by the tower to remain clear of the class delta airspace, or they don't acknowledge you by name, then those are the two ways you would not be allowed in. For example, Punicorda Tower, Cherokee 99907 Whiskey, and they come back and say, Cherokee 9090 Whiskey, Punagorda Tower, stand by. He's acknowledged us by name. We're allowed in. He doesn't have to say that we're allowed in. We're automatically allowed into the class delta airspace. If he said aircraft calling stand by instead of using our call sign, then we don't have two-way radio communication established and we must remain clear. Also, if he said Cherokee 9090 Whiskey remain clear of the class delta airspace or aircraft calling remain clear of the class delta airspace, those would be examples of not being allowed to cross the blue line. So we want to call up eight or 10 miles out so that we are able to establish two-way radio communication. He's able to call us by name, we call him by name, and then we're automatically allowed in. We don't want to wait till five miles out, a mile away from that ring, because we must have two-way radio communication established before our nose crosses that line, preferably eight or 10 miles out. The last important thing to note about Class D airspace is that once you land there, you're gonna to wanna to know what the ground frequency is. Sometimes the controller will say contact ground 0.9er. That means contact ground on 121.9. It'd be really helpful if you already knew that frequency and you already had it dialed in before you even landed. So all you had to do was press the flip-flop key and then have that frequency in there ready to go. So you can find that frequency in the AFD along with plenty of other great information. And that's about all we have for you in the way of class Delta airports. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you give us a thumbs up on our video. You can subscribe to us to follow all our latest episodes over here on the right. Also, go ahead and check out some of these videos down below. And remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at We'll see you all next time.